Hello, this is Insane Monster. Now, before we begin part one of this what if, I do have a couple of announcements. Mm -mm. This is due to the fact that some of you don't seem to be uh, watching till the very end when I make my announcements. So, yeah. First off, I want to state that the Halloween special will be beginning their recordings after this. As for details on them, well, to make it simple, there will be 12 What If parts recorded for the What If special. They will all play on Halloween Day, which is, as everybody knows, the last day of October. As for using the scheduling system for them, they'll be released one after the other on the, each hour on the hour, which means one What If released on each hour so yeah so i do hope that you enjoy that setup however that also means that after this what if i really have to start recording all 12 of the what ifs like doing making sure that they're all set so the what ifs will kind of stop for a little bit until i get all of the other recordings taken care of now then for the people who are on my discord you already know the two special what ifs that are going to get parts. So I do hope that you are looking forward to them. With that said, before we get started with this what if, hit it. Now then, since the last part was part zero, which means this is part one. As we see Izuku uh, getting up and getting ready for the day. Obviously, he's in, like I stated before, a very special wizard house hidden in modern day Japan buildings. So, yeah. As he gets ready, gets dressed, Tricol pulls a little fast one and slithers into his bag. This sometimes this is just a normal thing for him or well her actually. If you remember from last part, it's a three-headed snake similar to the one that you see on the uh, the thumbnail. So yeah. So this is the first time that she's actually done this stunt as he hurries up and grabs his bag leaving. On the way to school he does still see the villain fight with the heroes Kamui Woods as well as Mount Lady. Though after it was all taken care of he just used a, a magic jump. I'm not sure the technical term of the name, but it's the one where they basically teleport, like whooshing around into a certain point to vanish, and then doing the reverse, popping back out somewhere else. So, yeah. And gets to school on time. As students see this, they look at Izuku thinking how, how much they wish they had a quirk like that, and how much... It could save them on traveling time and such to get the school and back. He gets back into class as we the day continues and like in canon, the teacher uh, states about their future careers and such for high school. As like in canon, also he tosses the papers up into the air and we see just Everybody using their quirks as the teacher states that he knows they all want to be heroes. Like in canon, we have the teacher remarking that both Bakugo and Izuku want to be uh, going to UA. People aren't that surprised since they believe Deku has a warp quirk, which is actually just magic. 
as I said before, Deku, although he didn't inherit a quirk from his parents, who are wizard, who is a wizard and a witch, who both have quirks as well as magic, he is actually quite skilled at using uh, magic in general, controlling the flow of the magic energy a lot more proficiently than some other uh, wizards and witches. So, there is that. As for people, they can get how Bakugo is going to UA and such, as well as Midoriya, seeing how warp quirks are pretty rare, and how useful they could be in hero work. As they probably thinking of Izuku grabbing onto a villain and teleporting him directly into a prison or a uh, holding cell in the police department. Which, honestly, would be pretty useful. As class continues and such, the person sitting next to Izuku noticed that his bag is wiggling. As he then sees the snake tongue from one of the heads of Tricol just don't doing its thing and they start to freak out. As the teacher asks Izuku what's in his bag, he then just sighs and apologizing, stating that his quote unquote pet at home seems to have snuck into his bag. As the student who saw it says, You have a snake for a pet? As Izuku tries to think on his feet and comes up with a quick explanation stating that it's actually a quirk snake. As he leans into the bag to quietly use his parcel tongue to tell Tricol the plan. Tricol slithers out, revealing his three heads. Given that quirk animals are a thing, a three-headed snake is by far the least problematic. Though Deku did tell them not to increase their size like they're able to do. Because they can get pretty big. If, yeah. Next, the teacher just sighs, remarking, Honestly, it is an interesting quirk animal, but why is it here? Izuku scratches the back of his head as Tricol slithers up his arm and goes around his neck, wearing, looking kind of like a snake scarf thing. As Izuku states, well, sometimes she kind of is a little mischievous, though this is the first time she pulled something like this. As he uses his whole hand to rub it underneath the chin of each head. And remarking that it's not really that big of a problem. He's pretty docile and not that dangerous. As he just sighs, remarking that he doesn't get paid enough for this, stating that as long as it doesn't cause any problems, then it's fine. But it, he's not has to make sure that it doesn't hitch a ride in his backpack anymore to get to their class. Which he does promise. After school, as he goes to leave, we get it to where Bakugo comes up to him asking about the snake. And Bakugo, you know, being Bakugo, is hostile. Which, I would imagine, not just regular animals, but in even more so with magical creatures, they would sense the hostility as the three heads hiss at Bakugo and his friends. Bakugo doesn't flinch, but his friends do back up a bit. As Bakugo states, what's, the, what's your pet's problem? As Izuku pets the heads, trying to calm her down, he remarks, well, Animals have a tendency to sense hostility, and honestly, Bakugo, hostility is your default setting. With Bakugo getting more pissed, say, saying, What did you say? He uses his magic to teleport out of there in front 
of the school gates and starts walking. As he looks out the window, seeing him walk away with a smirk, as Bakugo just slams his fist on the bottom of the window opening, saying, So annoying. As like in canon, he does go the same way to get home, though Tricol warns him that he senses something coming. Animal senses for danger are a lot higher than humans. So, yeah, comes in handy. As he backs up away, the sludge villain emerges. He tells Izuku that he's running away from him, stating that he didn't think he'd be here and that he'll take his body. Tricol was getting ready to grow to attack him as Deku uses his partial tongue to tell her to stop. And to get into his coat, you know, the, it, the black coat thing that he wears for the school uniform, as he slithers in there with the sludge villain attacking Izuku, he teleports or warps onto the other side, thinking that if he can keep him busy long enough, whoever he's running away from will get here. All he has to do is make sure he doesn't get grabbed, which he is successful in, as All Might burst in like in canon, stating, Do not fear, for I am here! As then All Might blows the sledge villain away, though... Deku isn't in the crossfire for this. Like in canon, the villain gets bottled up, and Azuku gets a signing. As, like I said in the beginning, as part zero, the entire wizarding world knows about One for All, as well as the person who took him down, the non-wizard All Might, a hero with incredible power. So, he is just starstruck, even more so, but does compose himself to get an autograph as he jumps away. So, like in canon, he loses the bottle, with the bottom of his pocket being ripped from the force of the jump. So, yeah. As he heads off to continue home, as All Might deflates, realizing that he dropped the bottles. So, yeah, this blows in still happens, catching All Might and Zuku's attention as he goes there. All Might sees that he failed and that the villain has a hostage now. As Zuku gets there, he looks and sees Tricol slithering her heads out, taking a look. As one head states that, why aren't these Fools doing anything to help with the head that uh, is more or less the one that complains to the other two, stating that none of their powers are quite useful against somebody whose body is essentially a semi liquid. With the follower head just looking, asking, Who's that inside? The villain, as Izuku looks, he sees Bakugo. Instinctively, he runs toward the villain, like in canon, using his backpack to blind it. But unlike in canon, help warping into the face of Bakugo and the villain, grabbing them both, warping them high into the sky. As the villain panics, he ends up releasing Bakugo, as Bakugo remarks, Are you crazy? Why? Why would you do this? Because I needed him to let you go, as he reaches out and grabs Bakugo. So the sludge villain tries to grab them back. Izuku then teleports them on top of a large box of packaging boxes. To help cushion the impending impact of the teleporting. So, yeah. As the sludge villain falls back onto the street. Because he 
Izuku just teleported them straight up. And then teleported with him and Bakugo in a nearby area, basically on like the en near the entrance where people are seeing that they're okay. As the villain begins to lash out more, that All Might steps in, throwing a punch, defeating the Sludge Villain, causing it to rain. Of course, the villain is captured now as the police get there. And we see that the heroes are scolding Izuku for doing something, but Izuku sighs as Tricol hisses at them. He calms her down and states, Well, if you weren't going to do anything to help Bakugo, then someone had to. As All Might steps in while the heroes were getting really very offended, and annoyed by this comment. As he all might state, he has a point. If the heroes can't save somebody, then someone has to. Even without a license, he didn't actually violate any particular laws. All he did would move the villain from one place to another without actually harming him. Given his semi-liquid form, even that high fall wouldn't actually cause him any harm. As All Might is then sworn by reporters, and Izuku just grabs his bag and get out, so out of there, warping away. Bakugo does catch up with him, yelling at him that he didn't need his help. And then, before Izuku could say anything, he just storms off. As he then begins to walk, All Might appears in front of him again as then he shrinks down, causing Izuku to freak like in canon, as All Might then explains his power and that he wants to pass it on to Izuku. So, Izuku asked if he could wait until the weekend until they meet up for training, which All Might still gives him the address and states that he'll be waiting. But following deeply, nervously, he goes home and changes out of his normal school uniform into his Hogwarts uniform, going into the first level basement of his magical spice, uh, magical spice herb medicine house slash store, and uses the chimney to teleport to Hogwarts. After his Cram school lesson there to keep up with his magic studies is over. He heads over to the headmaster's office. Now, given this is like on the other side of the world, when you consider Japan and like Britain, where Hogwarts is, I'm pretty sure if it's late night uh, at in Japan, it should be, okay, if it's getting to be night at Japan, it should be getting to be morning in England. So, Izuku ends up going to the headmaster's office. After the death of Dumbledore, the selection of the headmasters of Hogwarts have actually been prioritizing choosing people like Dumbledore. With the same characteristics of not only the safety of the students and the teachers and such, the school's faculty, but the overall safety and concerning of the entire magic community. As Izuku gets to his office, who the current headmaster happens to be a somewhat elderly man, let's say about in mid-50s or so, a man called William J. Dornez. As he asks Izuku what he's here for, Izuku tells him something, though without revealing the exact specifics on what All Might told him, but enough to get the headmaster intrigued, essentially telling him that 
he ran into All Might, and All Might offered him something that could very much change things in a big way. Not just for the normal world of muggles, but for the world of wizarding as well. This does intrigue him, as like I said before, the entire wizarding community knows that All Might took down All for One, due to the fact he was a new Dark Lord of the time when quirks were emerging. So, obviously, he does ask some questions and realizes that he's holding back. He understands that there's probably something he isn't allowed to say. So, Izuku then states that he would like the headmaster to come and meet somebody to reveal wizarding to him in order for him to fully understand and for him to make his choice. He looks at Izuku and knows that he wouldn't be asking him this if it wasn't serious. Due to, due to the state of the world, not just the Ministry of Magic, but certain individuals like the headmasters of Hogwarts as well as the other two prominent uh, schools that we've seen in the world of Harry Potter during the Goblet of Fire movie. Their headmasters also have something similar. The ability to reveal the, the world of wizards and witches to non-magic uh, users as a precaution and or a necessity that they believe it's needed to uh, keep the world safe. So, yeah, there is that. So, he stands up and walks over to Izuku, placing his hand on his shoulder, stating that from the look on his face and the serious tone he has, he understands that he wouldn't be asking for something like this if it wasn't something incredibly important. So he agrees to it. And he understands that whatever he isn't telling him, it isn't his to tell. So he will reveal it to All Might in the best way that he knows how. And he'll also hope that All Might will reveal what he is offering. Zuku wouldn't go to these lengths if he didn't already know the implications of attaining a power that defeated the, if not last, but current Dark Lord would have on him and their entire world of muggles and magic. So, it's a pretty big situation that they're dealing with. Once they get to dig up a beat, Headmaster Dornez met with them, as Izuku told All Might that he has something to tell you that will actually change a lot of what he thinks, especially about how you defeated, well, the person you defeated all for one. All Might is shocked by this, as he asked, how do you know that name? Dornez steps up and as he states, all of us in our particular community know that name and know that it is a, that the person is to be feared. Afterwards, he asks him to follow, giving him a cloak. As he can see that All Might doesn't look anything like what people normally know, see him as. So it should be easy enough to let him in to the into Hogwarts and such without raising any real suspicions. He can come up with an excuse on the fly. As for the Ministry of Magic, he can fill him some of the higher members of the group in on the truth in order to help secure the secrecy of whatever's going on. As All Might walks into an odd building that seems deserted, though it is 
suddenly revealed that it's not. As the wall opens up, we see people appearing and disappearing in flames and chimneys. As uh, Mr. Garnez leads All Might to it, telling him to grab the powder, walk into the chimney, slam it down as he states Hogwarts. All Might does swallow a bit, being nervous and not understanding what's going on. Though he needs to figure out what's happening. Though Izuku does see that All Might's nervous about this, so he goes first, demonstrating what he has to do. Though afterwards, he's surprised, but he goes along with it and does it. Followed by the headmaster then. As then he explains everything about Hogwarts and their world. Secretly, of course. They go from place to place using the warping magic that they know to sow All Might around and what they are, what they can do. Even using it to discreetly pop into the more uh, not inhabited parts of their arena as a game was happening. All Might shocked by this, though even more so as he then tells them what they know about All for One, and how quirks affect wizards and witches who are born with it, and how All for One was one of them, not to mention that they're grateful that his arrogance in his power was the key element of his downfall. Afterwards, they headed over to his office as headmaster. All Might sat down, reeling from this information, not knowing what to make of it at first, but after hearing everything, he understands the severity of this and what it could mean for Zuku if he takes in one for all. Somebody who uses magic, like real magic that shocks him. As All Might dies, he then states, All right, revealed all this to me, the entire hidden world, from the normal masses. So, it's only right to tell you my secret. As he states the origins and such of one for all, stating that it was accidentally created by all for one and ended up becoming having the purpose of defeating him. This shocked both Izuku and the headmaster, but understood how it was able to defeat now how All Might was as the eighth user of this power, or telling how much power is already stuck up into his body, though wanting some details about it. From what they can gather, it isn't that he simply grows muscles and such. It's that the stocked up energy from the past users and such empower his entire body. In other words, it's a type of energy quirk that doesn't fire, but instead enhances the body, using it up with incredible energy in order for it to release a large amount of strength. This is backed up by the fact of the glowing red bands that form on the Zuku in full cowling whenever he uses it, as well as the green lightning that forms around his body. So, yeah, it does increase his strength, but I believe it does so by energizing his body with energy. So, yeah, that's how I see it and how I believe One for All works in its more basic state with in body enhancement. As he then asked if there's anything in particular that could happen if Izuku takes in this quirk. The headmaster remarks that Izuku is remarkably talented when it comes to controlling magical power allowing him to be quite gifted at learning magic. With this type of quirk, he's 
all around magic would be highly enhanced, as the headmaster describes how energy based quirks or quirks that can enhance the body or such through an energy flowing through the body have the unique effect of increasing all forms of magic in the wizard's case due to their how the quarks and magic interacts with one another in the same body so there's that since magic is produced by uh, magic energy an energy quirk would enhance all the magic which is why quirks like those wizards who have energy quirks are so covenanted and well they're more or less seen as a type of elite wizard or witch in their world or at least they have the potential to become quite elite if their control over their magic is poor then vice versa if they use the magic in combination with their energy quirk it could have a pretty bad feedback attempt which can more or less blow back on the user though as he remarked stating that although as i said zuku has remarkable talent in controlling the magic power he has learning spells at a fine rate stating that he shouldn't have any problems merging this one for all quirk with his magic though if he loses focus that might be another story all might is worried but he azuku stands up stating that he'll train as hard as he can body mind and spirit every day going through the hellish training if he has to he wants to be a hero he wants to help people and this statement causes a smile on all might's face as he walks up to him and states it looks like i picked a good successor so first we have to build up your body as all might then explains that if their body isn't strong enough then the power from run for all will be too much causing his limbs to blow off which now Izuku is very terrified but is still going with this though due to uh in typical stories and such magic users aren't that physically strong more or less or at least they tend not to be so Izuku has the same kind of thing as usual as in canon so yeah training like crazy to make sure that he's completely ready to inherit one for all physically and such so the schedule is somewhat augmented but it still goes in the same as in canon as he does in his the morning of the exam so there's that while on his off time he does relax at home which Ochako does visit every now and then as they hang out. As Tri call at when he goes to get to bed, talks to him stating that he should really not overwork himself so much. As for Dornez, or Headmaster Dornez, he has informed the more higher ranked members of the Magic Ministry, and they're shocked at what they've learned. Knowing that they can't let that kind of knowledge get out no matter what. As they make sure that anyone in their community that knows, which they're already there, they're gagged from telling anybody about this. Even going as far as using a contract magic to kill the end of any of them in the case that they spill the beans about it anybody who doesn't already know or who isn't privileged to know this knowledge to begin with as for Izuku like in canon he 
does still has to eat the hair, which he is just just shocked by and is having problems with it. So yeah. And that wraps it about up for part one. Now then, like I said in the beginning of the video, please do remember what I stated about the Halloween special. I do hope you understand and are awaiting the anticipation. So please do be patient and make sure that you're ready on Halloween day for when the special is unleashed. As for the hours that this begins at, I'll keep that a secret for now. So, hope you enjoyed. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Also remember to hit that notification bell, setting it on all. Also, if you want to support my channel, do make sure to go to the link in the description below to Beautiful Halo. So, with all that said, please make sure that you're safe out there, and I'll... See you later, guys.